You posted on your Instagram recently about a rather horrible experience that no one should really have to deal with. Now, I'm not going to ask you to revisit or relive it or describe that experience to you, but how does it make you feel when people make fun of your disability? Um, you know, it, it genuinely makes me question my own existence. Uh, and I must really highlight this, how severe this is. I've, you know, I, I've heard of more extreme cases of what I've gone through. I've heard people going through less extreme things, um, but it's on par with racism. Welcome to the Propulsion Swimming Podcast, where we aim to give swimming the coverage and publicity it deserves. Every week, we celebrate the sport we love with amazing special guests and topics from around the swimming pool. And now, here are your hosts, Scott and Dan. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of the Propulsion Swimming Podcast. I'm your host, Scott, and back with me yet again is my good friend, Dan. And Dan, yet again, we have secured another amazing guest, which we cannot wait to speak to. Yeah, we've got another fantastic guest on for you guys with so much to talk about. Some stuff that we shouldn't really be talking about, to be honest with you. However, it's something that definitely needs to be spoken about to raise awareness of. Yes, it absolutely kind of does need to be brought up. Um, like you mm. said, so for this week's episode, please welcome British record holder and Tokyo Paralympian Will Perry. Will, thank you for coming on to the podcast. I know you've been an extremely busy man over the last few days. How are you doing? Oh, hi. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, it's been an absolute blast. I'm exhausted. It's Monday afternoon. I'm shattered. Um, but I couldn't be happier. You know, I've never been, you know, the last time I was buzzing this much is when I came um on off the plane into tokyo it's fantastic seeing so many people support me messages um well you know support condolence all sorts it's Mm. been an incredible week so far so before we get into kind of why you've been the busiest man on the planet or in britain for the last what three or four days um why don't you talk through your condition for our listeners to start with so um, I've got a condition called achondroplasia. Um, it's a form of gra- um, dwarfism. I believe it's the most common form, and it occurs in one in 25,000 births, I believe. So if you do the maths, there's around 75,000 of us in the UK, roughly. Um, so it means I have restricted growth. My legs are shorter. My arms are shorter. I have a weakened spine. And some of us can have more severe medical conditions, uh, like hydrocephalus, uh, which is a buildup of fluid in the brain, and a whole host of um, sometimes unique medical conditions that can come with this condition. But most of the time, it's mostly, uh, how do you put it, uh, physical. You can only see the problems. Um, but Otherwise, yeah, it's not. There's not much to talk about. It means I'm, you know, I'm just shorter. I've, I've mm. stopped growing when I was 15. I'm four foot four, so I'm around average height for a male with dwarfism. Um, yeah, there's there's actually not too much to say about it, um, but unfortunately, in the social side, there's a little bit more to say. Yeah, so essentially what this podcast episode is going to be doing is we're going to be raising some dwarfism awareness because that's what your campaign has been doing over the past few days. And I actually would like to speak to you a bit about in the swimming aspect as well. So how it affects your training and all sorts like that. Um, We'll talk about Tokyo Paralympics and then Northampton. We, We can't avoid the topic because it's an extremely successful para squad that's going on over there. Fair um. Okay, let's let's start with the the horrible topic to start with, and the horrible well, question. So, by the way, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, you posted on your Instagram recently about a rather horrible experience that no one should really have to deal with. Now, I'm not going to ask you to revisit or relive it or describe that experience to you, but how does it make you feel when people make fun of your disability? Um, you know. It, it genuinely makes me question my own existence. Um, obviously, you can be as happy with yourself as you possibly want. 
you're always going to care about what others think, even if they don't mean anything to you. Um, I always like to think of myself as, you know, I don't care. I don't give a toss what everyone else thinks. I do. And everyone, I think it's a human trait. Um, that's why we present ourselves in, you know, that's why we shave our faces, why we dress smartly. We care. Mm. Um, it's deeply upsetting. I think about it all the time, every single day, and look at myself in the mirror, thinking, oh, my arm, my arm looks weird. You know, my butt sticks out. That's part of dwarfism. Uh, because your spine's curved and your your bumper sense is ticked out, it means you have a bit of a pronounced uh, well, you have a pronounced bottom. You're walking; people walk from you can walk side to side, so we do stick out, and it just highlights you know that we're different, which no one likes to do, um, on purpose at least. Uh, you know, there's so many times where I want to go out and have a coffee. Um, have a catch up with a mate, go and see some family in a restaurant. And all I'm doing is looking around, you know, looking around the supermarkets in a restaurant, uh, even public parks. And you've got people looking, people staring. They're the most common. And then you've got the laughter, the snarky comments. Like, you know, no one likes commenting about your appearance. Uh, and I must really highlight this, how severe this is. I've, you know, I, I've heard of more extreme cases of what I've gone through. I've heard people going through less extreme things, um, but it's on par with racism. It, it's we've you know we've come so far in the last couple of years. You know the incident of George Floyd with Black Lives Matter awareness. Um, we've come so far, and you know we don't need, you know we we shouldn't need to remind ourselves that these people need to be accepted in society. No, it shouldn't be reminded. I shouldn't be making these posts and be on the news about it. I should be just going about my life. Um, but unfortunately, I have to. But yeah, it's awful. Like, I cannot emphasize it enough. Mm. You did an Instagram post and you, you said on the post that it sounds like you're, you were ranting when actually I think it's the first step in the right direction of getting people to understand that words can really affect people. So I, for one, I think it's a brilliant thing that what you're doing, absolutely the right thing to do. And I'd encourage you to keep putting the message out there so that other people would understand what you're going through and what you're experiencing, because it should never happen, never happen again. Um, does this sort of thing happen on a regular basis? It's almost like it's every day. Oh, yeah. It depends on the time of day. So um, I go out on specific times of day. I um, won't go out on holidays and I won't go out on weekends. Absolutely not, because unfortunately, I think firstly, from a positive point of view, the reaction that we've gotten shows actually how much of the public is with us, you know, mm. shocked. It's just that one or two percent, which I believe are more common around the areas where, you know, where we have to go shopping and all that. And it's people my age. It's people, I think, from the age of around 12, 13, up until maybe 22, 23, then you get you know, the people who genuinely really need to grow up uh, older than that. Uh, yeah, so, you know, I think I think the post proves, I think, firstly, how many people don't know that this is happening. That's why it went viral. They were shocked. Um, I don't have a particularly big following on Instagram compared to some of the biggest names in swimming. Um, but it was the people who follow me some of them who do and then it took off mm. but in the swimming community i've you know i've never felt more part of a community before everyone coming together i've spoken to people who i never thought i'd speak to um you know like, wow i've been starstruck um, on so many occasions speaking to people who are hurt and distressed by my experience but british swimming as well didn't uh, really helped me raise awareness um, other swimming uh, podcasts, I think what Swim Swam um, will be helped me as well. But it's the, all about the community who came together, you know. And I like to think that we would do that with every, anyone. I'd like to think that the um, the swimming community is a very inclusive one. I, I would really I would, hope to think that, yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's unbelievable, especially not only because we've got a strong parity, but it's the um ethos that we have in british swimming mm. and 
outside of British swimming as well, people who aren't on the program, you've got you know, Swim England, and just even just the normal swimming community, whatever level they might be, because we're so used to having paras around. That's one of the only few places I can walk around and I'm not looked at. No one makes comments. Yeah. Um, that's the places where I feel safe, even though I have no idea who they are. It's a pre community I'm really proud to be a part of. Definitely. Um, we were speaking to you beforehand. You said you've got like two, three hundred messages to respond to over the next few days. How amazing was it to see all of this response on Instagram to your post? Um, you know, for as someone who's not used to getting a lot of attention on Instagram, you know, I'm not a celebrity. Um, I'm not a big name. So for me, you know, it's like being given a new toy. You can't leave it alone. Um, I've never been so desperate to thank everyone mm. i felt particularly rubbish that night when i went and did my post i wanted to get it sorted and i thought you know what let's see what happens uh, it might create a little bit of awareness since i'm a paralympian uh, one or two people might share it and boy i was wrong uh, <laughs> mm. i've got several hundred still to answer i've answered several hundred and i'm not showing off these are messages that people have genuinely spent they're not just little messaging i'm so sorry they're paragraphs and paragraphs a lot of them are parents mm. with kids my condition asking what it's going to be like they're scared you know my parents were when i was born they didn't know what it was going to be like for me but it it puts the biggest smile on my face seeing you know these people saying you know i can't repeat the language but you know these people they're awful people uh we're, we stand with you like, oh, is there no better feeling than someone saying that? We stand with you. We are behind you. Um, it makes me feel so good. And it's never made me feel so special and actually so accepting of myself. Mm, I think, oh, actually, maybe it is all right to be like this. You get those really common questions that people ask me, if you could go back to a normal person, like, would you? Or go back, would you? Um, and actually, a lot of the time, lots of people say, yeah, no, I love being who I am. A lot of the time I say, yeah, in a heartbeat. Uh, a lot of the time I absolutely hate it. But now it actually makes you think a little bit more about, so actually, you know what? Because I'm like this, I'm creating a difference. Hmm. Um, it's mind-blowing. I cannot, uh, I can't thank everyone enough for it. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. unbelievable. How much does it impact your day-to-day -day life? Like you say, you don't go out on weekends or certain times you don't go to the shops. Um, does it have a big effect on your mental health? Um, no. Uh, most of the time not because I've lived with this my whole life. Mm. You know, if you do something enough, it's, let's say, let's take lockdown, for example. When you do it enough, obviously it becomes annoying. We don't want to do it, but we're used to it. Yeah. Um, it's the same with this, but except I've been living it for 21 years. Um, is actually uh, the, the public reaction was one of the first things that made me realize I was a dwarf because obviously your parents inform you, but you never know what you are, you know, what that is at mm. three years old, you don't know the difference. Yeah. Um, so that was one of the things that really actually made me stand out to myself thinking, oh, I am different. So, yeah. Um, sometimes, you know, if I'm with my mates, I will go out of those times because I feel safe. Um, so for instance, I'll put an example, my best friend, Alex, who's here at the moment, uh, if he sees someone abusing me, laughing at me, he will go and say something. Say something. He will. Yeah. Um, a true friend. Yeah. yeah. Um, but in, when, I'm, you know, when I'm living day to day life, then like, obviously we're, it's amazing what we can do on the internet. We can order stuff. We can chat online we can meet online technically um so to speak but uh yeah no no like just because i can cope most times doesn't mean i i should be if you mm. know what I, mean. I, I should yeah. have to be doing this yeah yeah definitely now you said that you'd had parents of people who suffer from the same condition as you reach out to you so if there are potentially other para swimmers listening who I really hate to say this, unfortunately have gone through the same experience or are going to go through the same experience that you've gone through. What advice would you give them in how to deal with it at that exact time? And then maybe where they could go for some help afterwards if they need it. So keep your friends close. Um, it's, it's a tricky question to answer because mm -hmm. 
you know, I believe, um, you know, I want to lead this campaign in creating this, uh, eradicating this issue. And I have no idea how I'm going to do it. <laughs> um, so um, I think for the parents, use these, you know, LPA, DSA UK websites to seek advice. Uh, I personally didn't. Um, it's not something my family chose to do. Um, you know, we sort of, uh, sought advice from friends. But in terms of parents, you know, seek advice. Don't be worried because we're living, we're living in an ever more sensitive world. And I really hope by the time that your kids will be at the point of, uh, as you go, going out in public by themselves or realizing what's happening in public, will be starting to make a difference and starting to become unacceptable. Um, I'm hoping to do some work with Ellie Simmons. She's a very good friend of mine um, on something with the BBC, potentially. We don't know yet. Um, I'm hoping to do my own thing. And then the kids themselves or people my age, older, younger. Um, I think what I'd say at the moment is speak out. Mm. It, it can be difficult confronting because um, often they're making these jokes. They're not going to be the friendliest of people. And obviously we're not the most robust. So I think at the moment, keep doing what you're doing, but don't worry because change is coming. It might take a while, but I think the thing I would encourage though, is especially like do what I've done, speak out on social media. And if it goes viral enough with many people doing it, you know, it can't just be me. I can't, you know, I, otherwise it sounds like I'm the only one having this experience. Everyone needs to do it. Go, actually, you know what? I have the same as Will Perry. And mm -hmm. if everyone does it, everyone goes, oh my God. You've actually got a real problem here. Mm. That's why. But yeah, it's it's difficult advice to give since I struggle with it myself. But seeking help, speak to you know people like myself um, mm. or Ellie Simmons or another friend of mine, Maisie Summers Newton, who's a rising star in the pool. Yeah. Um, we're all really friendly we all want to stick together as a community we all want to help each other out don't be afraid to tell us your stories to message us and we'll do the best to help you out and see, give you advice yeah absolutely yeah is there anything that we can do as propulsion swimming to help prevent this from happening in the future and raise more awareness um i think you know with what i think it's just telling the story you know just exposing my stories as far and wide as we can and, you know, I know Ellie Simmons has been particularly good at doing that over the last decade when, you know, she's been the forefront of para swimming. Uh, I think the idea is exposure. Yeah. Um, you know, putting it where people might not see it. Uh, and, you know, social media is such a powerful tool nowadays. That's the way the message is going to get across. That's where the people who are giving us this abuse, this is where they're based. This is where they're going to go, oh, gosh, you know, it's becoming no longer socially acceptable for me to do this. Mm. You know, it should be a hate crime. You know, honestly, mm. you should be locked up for it. So as so I've mentioned on BBC News tonight, the word midget is like the N-word. Um, it's used horribly throughout media. Um, and, you know, that's it's used as a derogatory term in films and in other unmentionable uh, films. Uh, but, yeah, I think exposure is a key. And mm. that's not, you know, gaining my presence. If there's anyone else, immediately share it. Go on, come on, guys. Let's get on board and let's create a campaign. Let's create or eradicate this issue because it's going to take a lot of people and a lot of time. Mm. absolutely well if there is anything we can do in the future to help out with any campaign that you guys set up then Thank no you. problem we will, we will get on it yeah. um i'm actually really interested to raise some awareness and increase my own understanding for dwarf dwarfism in a swimming aspect so what differences are there when it comes to kind of swimming in general so your training with your condition compared so, to kind of able body teammates so i think 
you know, I'm gonna we Northampton Swimming Club is gonna be mentioned a lot in this podcast that, because that's fine. There's, yeah. there's there's no club in the UK that's nailed it like Northampton. Mm. Um, so I think you know um, adaptation is key. So obviously we can't do it full sets and full times. That's obvious. But where everyone makes a mistake is they give it to us too easy. I'm not going to give all our secrets away, but um, <laughs> they give what I'm going to say in terms of actual how we should be trained is they're getting it too easy. I've been, I've visited to enough clubs, I've spoken to enough people to go, oh yeah, you should be doing a lot more than that, mate. Um, we are trained unbelievably hard. Uh, my arm is about to fall off as it was, as we're speaking now. <laughs> came straight back from a heart rate set. And um, yeah, so with dwarfism in the pool, we're naturally unstable. Obviously humans, we're not meant for water. With dwarfism, you know, you can have really deformed limbs. Uh, you floating the water, you're not going to swim the same way as a normal able-bodied swimmer, and your coach has got to understand that, otherwise you're not going to succeed. Um, we, at Northampton, we've come up with a clever breaststroke technique, which, with Maisie, has won her world records, Paralympic golds, world championship medals. Um, it's done her a lot of good. And as soon as I picked it up, uh, I think when I was told to give the technique, I hadn't done the 50 breaths for two years, but when I tried the technique, I dropped 12 seconds on a 50 breast. Oh, wow. That's not bad. Um, and then another, because I've done a, then I tried in the 100 breast, which I had done frequently. I dropped six seconds in that just instantly. Blind. Um, so it's all about having a coach with understanding. Mm -hmm. um, it's also having a good base. I'm a really late swimmer. I started when I was 15. Mm -hmm. um, compared to a lot of swimmers, uh, it's about nine or ten, I believe, when they start being competitive. I was 15. I could swim before, but that was about it. And I've still got technique issues. Um, so in terms of dwarfism in the pool, the, actually, the, the positive thing is there'll be no environment where you're accepted more. And I can't mention her name enough, Elisa Moons. You know, wow, what work she's done mm -hmm. for us, for, you know, everyone wants to be like her. You know, uh, you know, I've be speaking to you kids who are, what, I'm speaking to a new girl in Northampton. Her name's Rosie. She's 10, obviously inspired by Lisa Simmons and Maisie. Um, and everyone wants to be like her. So there's no place where they're going to be accepted more. Um, there are people coming up the ranks who are starting to nudge on the doorstep of what I'm doing, which is a bit, <laughs> I, need that, I need that competition. So it's good news. <laughs> But yeah. like, crikey, I've got to get a move on. Um, <laughs> otherwise, I might not be at the front anymore. I'm not at the front in some things. and uh, But it's good to keep me on my toes. So it's a really good environment. And sorry to keep rambling on about it. With dwarfism, you have hypermobility. Um, you can have degrading joints. I've, for instance, I had to have my cartilage removed from my knees, both of them. Um, so I've now got arthritis in my knees and I'm 21. Um, with swimming... All your muscles are being used. Mm. Um, it's really good for you. With us, with dwarfism, it's really unhealthy, even more so than normal people to be overweight. It's really it puts it puts strain on our spines. Um, it can uh, wear down our joints. So, from a medical point of view, it's extremely beneficial. Mm. Is there any differences in terms of nutrition or recovery after sessions? Um, you have to be careful in terms of so phys physical recovery in terms of physios you yeah. know they have to know about you our anatomy is different mm. in terms of eating no <laughs> um, if I am I don't know about it I, I, <laughs> eat, as, I eat as much as the normal guys um, I've got to keep up a certain body mass uh, we're obviously burning a certain amount of calories per day Mm -hmm. So my diet looks the same as any other athlete's diet and is about the same quantity as well, about what, three, 4,000 calories. Mm. Um, but obviously that's dependent on who you are, what you're doing in the pool, etc. cetera. Mine's, my, my program is very 150 meter based, lots of gym work. So I can mm. eat a bit. 
Yeah. Well, let's talk about the gym work because I think Dan's done some research and found you've got a separate Instagram account just, just for your gym work. If that's <laughs> correct, how often are you in the gym? Is it, are you a bit like me? I love the gym more than the pool. Um, so we built, I've got my own gym. Um, we built it in lockdown, but we were going to build one anyway. We planned it in 2019. Um, and then we got the bare bones equipment when we got locked down. And when we were unlocked, everyone was selling their stuff. So we picked it all up. Um, I love the gym. It's one of the few places where I can actually outshine my fellow teammates. Um, okay. I can lift more. I remember we had to do some strength tests and my gym is speci specially designed so I can use everything. Um, so I can reach the pull up bar so I can mm -hmm. fit in the trap bar. Um, and you know, I don't have this problem of abuse in the gym. I want to be in my space. We're very, very lucky to have it. Um, but when we did this strength testing, I didn't have nearly half the equipment available. I still beat them in what two, one, I think two tests. So it, for me, it's always a little bit, I know it's, we know we talk about egos and gyms, but when, <laughs> but when in swimming, you're always, you know, given a handicap, mm. um, okay. you know, to, in sets or times, like obviously we use everything points and measuring, but when you go to the, when I go to the gym with my mates and I'm not being big headed here, but I can lift a lot more than they can. It puts a smile on my face. Just like, <laughs> actually, you know what? I weigh a lot less than you and I can lift a hell of a lot more than you. But yeah, I love the gym. It's a really nice place to reset. I always train alone. Um, I never train with anyone else, which is the way I like it. I have my programs written by British Swimming and it's a really good way to switch off, listen to some music because obviously you can't listen to music in the pool, um, lift some really, really big weights, which I love doing uh, because you can lift really big weights and go get five minutes rest, which... Yeah. In swimming, that's, it, that's why Scott likes it. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> that's me all it, over. It, it's exactly that. So you know, we're spending thirty seconds lifting, and you spend five yeah. minutes on the sofa. Yeah. Whereas in swimming, you spend five minutes swimming and thirty seconds rest. So yeah. that's one of the reasons I think, as a swimmer, I'm particularly attracted to it. Um, <laughs> but no, I, I do love it. And I, um, up until literally a couple of weeks ago, I didn't have, uh, I wasn't actually that busy during the day. I had a lot of free time, so I thought. Might as well just create a good gym counts. Some people might be interested, and a few people have. It's just a nice little pastime. It, it, it does come a bit of a distraction when you set your phone up, you go for a mm. squat, and then your phone falls down, <laughs> and then all the music stops when you're about to go down. Ugh. But it's a lot of fun. It, it's it's like my safe my safe place because yeah. I have I have all my posters up on the wall. My brother's a runner. He's a hundred meter sprinter, so we have pictures and posters of him up on the wall. Uh, we have memorabilia from London, Rio, Tokyo. It's really our own environment. I love it. Are you able to do every exercise? You talked about the pull-up bar. What changes to the pull-up bar have you made to be able to do that exercise? Um, so we, I use the bench. So we've got an adjustable bench and we just raise it up a little bit. Um, the one thing we struggle with is obviously our hands mm. are quite small. So getting our grip around uh the bar it you know it can sort of impede the work we do in the gym obviously when we're doing pull-ups let's say we're targeting the lats um and biceps and whatever i can't i'm not a mm. pt but um in swimming it's not about grip strength so yeah. i use straps you know, okay we're working, we're working on you know everything else i don't want to, it to be restricted by my grip but so for instance i had to find a trap bar you know the one where you stand in the middle of it a lot of them, my arms would be out like that, and then you can't do anything with it. So I found one, I think it was fabricated by some, like an individual on a farm, and it weighs 23.72 kilos. So whenever I have deadlift PBs, they look really keen because it's 0.37. <laughs> yeah. um, so it's been fabricated, but it fits me perfectly. Um uh, I have to you know, jump on. Sometimes I use a plier box to uh, reach things. Uh, using a lap pull down machine, I have to put a weighted vest on because when I jump to pull it down, often it'll weigh more than me. Oh, okay, I see. It'll get stuck. So I have to yeah. put a weighted vest on just to get it down so I can start the movement. So yeah. there are some adaptations. I've got you know specialized equipment 
you know, to pull things down. I've got my favourite ones are dumbbell liftoffs because our arm range of movements, you know, do dumbbell chest press. Mm. It can be really hard to get them up, especially when you're working by yourself. So I've got these; they're called dumbbell hooks. You can rest them on the barbell. They bring down; they come down about thirty centimeters, and then you put the dumbbell on with a strap over. So they'll sway in front of you, and you can lift them off the dumbbell oh. um, and press with them, or overhead press, or whatever you might be. It's a fantastic tool. It's thirty quid, best thirty quid I've spent on the gym. I mean, that's really interesting, actually. I yeah. this that's kind of the sort of awareness I was looking to raise. Kind of if anyone <laughs> is out there, well, most commercial yeah. gyms don't have them. We have a lot of equipment. That we yeah, exactly. A lot of commercial gyms mm. don't have. But yeah, stuff like that that makes um, my gym better than commercial gyms. And obviously I don't have to pay a subscription. I don't have to find them. My dumbbells will be nicked if I go to the loo. Um, yeah. And I feel safer there. It's, you know, obviously with the environment we live in at the moment with COVID and all that, but also with what we've been discussing with you know, dwarfism, um, it could be a pretty intimidating environment. I don't want to be looking over my shoulder. I just want to be focusing on and it can be my music. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Should we get back into the pool a little bit? Um, we're in the middle of winter months now, which is traditionally the hardest block of training. How yep. many hours do you, are you doing on a weekly basis? So we are, I'm on, ooh, I was about to say eight hours. I'm not, I'm on eight sessions. So I believe it's 18 hours. Okay. Um, most of them are two hour sessions because we've lost a bit of pool time. Um, some of them are two and a half hours where we can. We're on three mornings, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday morning. Always have Sunday off, very important. Um, and yeah, the training is brutal. So tonight we had a heart rate. Tomorrow morning will be a long aerobic session. We've got threshold tomorrow night. Um, we'll have um, kick and pull. We've got you know a race pace Thursday morning. Uh, speed Thursday night over distance um, and then tolerance it's we've got all the hard stuff yeah. everyone else does, um, and it's rather disgusting <laughs> yeah. but it's necessary yeah we've just done a um, swimming parent support haven't we with AP and Kev on our live stream oh, yeah. and Kev we... Pickard Kev Pickard yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah and we were talking about winter training because it is the high meterage the really intense sessions plus it's dark outside and it doesn't help if it's minus two as well yeah. it, it's not easy is it I suppose yeah. you'll you look forward to when competitions come up because then when you know taper can come in the distance is shorter is that what you prefer I'm one of those really weird people firstly with the winter I love the winter I'll get hay fever oh okay. um, I like, you know, I like being going out. I like being able to go outside and not sneeze, not boil. Mm. Um, that's another thing I can bring into autism quickly. We have a really high, all our organs are the same size, so my blood's pumped around quickly. So I have naturally a higher body temperature than normal people. Um, so it means I get hot very easily. Uh, but yeah, back to the meters. Um, I've been doing a sprint program for the last three months just as a trial to see what it'd be. Um, I've got cold feet about it. You know, we it might be working, but I prefer the conventional method. I asked the coach to go back. Let's do go back to heart rate because, you know, in P in performance one in Northampton Swimming Club, up until, um, you know, August 2021, every single para swimmer who's been in P1 went to the Paralympics. Um, we've got two new girls at the moment um, who are looking very promising. But at the moment, I love I love working hard. Um, sometimes I can struggle to work hard, especially when I'm hungry and all that. But I always work as hard as I can. Um, and taper scares me. Sometimes I feel like, oh, you know, we're tapering too early. I'm going to lose fitness or something like that. So I know when I can relax when we're doing a lot of meters because I know the fitness has always been maintained. Mm. interesting interesting you spoke about northampton and all four of you went to the paralympics should we should we talk about that squad for a little bit then uh yeah i think it means mentioning it, yeah. it definitely does um how good was it to have all of your teammates and friends as part of team gb at the tokyo olympics well i think we forget that we've also we also had our former coach jackie marshall who is british swimming so that technically means five yeah mm. I don't think any club's done that before in history, not with the Olympics or Paralympics, bar national centres. Mm -hmm. And we're just a normal swimming club. We're an amateur swimming club. Um, 
it was incredible. So I'm, uh, I say I've done most of my work last year or so with Maisie. Um, we've done, we, her strengths are my weaknesses and her weaknesses are my strengths. So we're really good for training partners. I cannot swim over anything over 200 meters. It's embarrassing. <laughs> um, whereas she is an aerobic machine. She just keeps on going. Especially when, when you're training and you look at what she's doing, it pisses you off. It gets so <laughs> annoying. Um, just looking at what she's like, she keeps on going. You're like, I can't do that. And then obviously, because I'm a bit taller, I'm a guy, when we're sprinting, she's, it's, she's got me to chase. So we're really good for each other. And we used to do race sim for, uh, and I would race her in the 400 free and 200, uh, not the 200, 400 free, sorry. That's us for rubbish. Um, in the 200 time in 100 breaststroke, uh, we would race each, that, each other each week in Moulton. And guess what she got gold on? <laughs> the in the 100 breast. She didn't get gold in the 400 free. Yeah. <laughs> uh, her, so Claiming I'm not credit. Saying, I'm not saying <laughs> Amazing, but if you're listening, <laughs> um, we've obviously got Zara, you know, poor girl, she had a really tricky experience. She had be she was a close contact on the plane. Um, you know, she was sent into isolation two days when we we're into training camp. She had to be separated from us all for all but five or six days. Um, she had two or three fourth place finishes. Mm. Oh, yeah. poor girl, but you know, she she did phenomenally well. Ellie Robinson, obviously, um, uh, she was in my relay. Um, and then she uh, put in a tremendous effort for her 50 fly. Um, obviously, not quite as successful as she wanted it to be, but. Obviously, she did that interview afterwards, which caught the heart of the nation. Mm. Um, yeah. And then obviously we had Jackie there as well. Um, Jackie, she's like our like we all may ask Maisie, ask Zara. She's like our second mum. I see. I saw Jackie a lot more than I saw my own parents last year. Mm. Um, you know, she was fantastic to have out there um, because it's a familiar face. A lot of the time when you go away with Team GB, you're presented with new coaches, and obviously it's a stricter mm. regime. Whereas Jackie, it's like, oh yeah, I can go and speak to her if there's something wrong, or she can. Mm. She knows what we're like. She knows our habits. And she can go and tell us off if well, I get told, <laughs> I get told off more than all the others get told off um, because I'm really forgetful. I forget my water bottle. I forget to do a bit of the set. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> so it was nice to have that familiar shouty voice with us. Um, but in seriousness, having you know four other members of Northampton Swimming Club out there. Like, you know, it's a, uh, a privilege, really. Yeah. You took part in quite a few events. What would you say was your most impressive event? Oh, I wouldn't say imp <laughs> impressive because I don't know how much of an impression I left. Um, <laughs> I was there for the relay, um, which we had a bit of a disaster with because um, I wouldn't say a disaster. We still made the final, but it didn't go quite replanned because poor Susie Heck she had two asthma attacks I think on a day mm, we've spoken and to her yeah. yeah. so she had a really tough time she Very did phenomenally good. well though um, mm. so we had to substitute more people we could have 20 points in the relay so I'm 6 because I'm an S6 I think we only used 18 out of 20 points available um, there was one point when in the final the Chinese had finished I see world record I finished I think they finished in something like 218 something like that and i was still on the block waiting for early chalice to come in i could see everyone cheering celebrating to go wow china the camera's focusing on china i haven't gone yet <laughs> <laughs> i had time to take in the ball and gone i had to go that was in the paralympic final um my favorite probably was 100 breasts because i pb'd um you know it's a really fun event it's really consistent for me um it's my favorite to swim so uh, I'd say probably that. I didn't make a final on anything individual, but I had a lot of fun. And it's a really good thing to get experience from. Now the you know, now that I've gone to games just to have a you know, race in the relay and then have an experience and everything else. Now I've got that experience um to really boost my performance 
in the next, you know, we've got Commonwealth Games coming up, we've got World Championships coming up, Europeans next year, Paralympics in 2024. There's a lot I've learned that it, I've really taken value to. Has it like um, sparked a fuse? Almost is spark to fuse the word I'm looking for? Lit a lit a fuse yeah. underneath you? Like I, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that, I don't think that's right, but we know what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> I know what you mean. Like um, I, you know, people um, go for a post games dump, and I did as well. Um, but I, I really suffered. <laughs> but when I left the games, I was like, right, I'm going to train really hard. I'm going to make a final next time. Uh, we're going to do this or that. I was really motivated. I really wanted to make a final, be up there with the really big names. Um, it's really difficult um, in para swimming. Sometimes you can have a really easy classification. Sometimes you can have a hard classification. Mine's one of the mm. harder ones. Mm. Um, there's always controversy around everywhere and I'm not going to get into the politics because I'm going to get in trouble. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I've never felt more, more motivated and I put that in a post saying I want to live more, I want to eat more, I want to train more, I want to sleep more, I want to do everything more just to make, uh, improve on my experience mm, uh, because yeah. we, we don't know what Paris is going to look like. I don't know if I'm going to be on the plane then. I don't know if I'm going to be retired. Who knows? Mm. I take it as it, you know, as it comes, but boy, I'm motivated. And was that the biggest, biggest lesson was it? just being motivated and having that inspiration to then, I assume Paris is the next major target? Um, yeah, well, I'd love to meet everything this year. This is a big mm. year. Commonwealth Games, yeah. World Championships. Home Commonwealth Games, in fact, on the yeah. Jubilee year. Um, yeah. So my biggest motivation to my teammates, um, you know, I, I was in a friendship group with Joel and Catchfall and Reese Dunn. Mm. Um, Reese Dunn, no introduction. Triple power, big Super champion. Successful. Yeah, he did. He did okay, didn't he? He did all right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Maisie, obviously, is my teammate. Jordan was my roommate. Uh, lots of people in my um, my flat got medals, and it's just like I want to be like you. I want to be like you. You know, I want to do what you do. Um, but I know I need to work really, really hard to do that. And that's one thing I think people don't really realize sometimes actually how hard you do have to work to do it. Um, and because I've seen it firsthand, I know exactly what is involved, and it it's going to be challenging. But you know, come on, throw it at me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, it's been incredibly fun talking to you. We've uh, it's gone the whole range. We've talked about a very serious subject to start with, but jumping back into the pool, it, it's been so much fun to learn about. Well basically increase my own understanding of how your swimming goes essentially hmm. well, well it's been in incredibly having me on here and you know um i can't you know, sing your praise enough for you know helping me with my spreading awareness with what i'm trying to campaign for obviously i uh, i spend i live alone so i often don't get a lot, a lot of time to chat so when i do have time to chat i chat um <laughs> so i i I've absolutely loved it. It's actually flown by. I'm looking at the thing. Yeah, I know. Like, yeah. 45 minutes. I haven't had dinner yet. <laughs> yeah. So I need to go and have dinner at some point. But no, it's been really, really nice speaking to you. And it's been really nice for you providing me a platform to share my message on. Positive and negative messages. It's been fantastic. Mm. Yeah. Now, before we finish, we do have one final round of questions for you. We do some quick fire questions. Do you sound up for those? If it's about football, then I have no idea. <laughs> but, it's all swimming yeah. all swimming okay bro. Yeah. yeah far away well the last uh, one's hard but yeah <laughs> <laughs> what's your favourite event in swimming 100 breaststroke who is your swimming idol yeah. swimming idol I'd say probably Maisie okay what is the proudest moment of your swimming career so far Getting announced to be on the Paralympic Games. What is the hardest set you've ever done in training? Oh. Pick one of the ten. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'd like to say um, the we did it, it's like a bleep test sort of thing. Starting. Uh, as many hundreds as we can on two minutes 
and the time we did 75s and the time each time we finish we lose a second so then it's we did it 75s on 1 159 and 158 and so forth and you keep going until you cannot make the time so even if you get a second rest you go yeah that killed you we tried that once with 25s and that was hard. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we did some, but the others did. I think Jackson O'Rourke. Um, I think it was he's either he managed. From it, running. Mm. Yes. He's yeah. improperly impressive. I think he managed to do either 52 or 57. Wow. Um, off two minutes. He, he's unbelievable. Um, but yeah, I'd say that amongst others. Yeah. <laughs> um, and final question if you were to go on a road trip there's three spaces in the car who would you go with they can be friends three, family or celebrities three, cele- three spaces in the car yeah yep. um, Ricky Gervais mm. um, Jeremy Clarkson uh, is he driving he's driving right he's driving yeah uh, <laughs> Ricky Gervais Jeremy Clarkson uh, and uh, Jimmy Carr. Oh, I like to laugh. That's a funny car. Very That's funny. funny car. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we got that. <laughs> well well like we said it, it's been awesome to have you on this week's episode of the propulsion swimming podcast if we can do anything in the near future or distance future to help raise any sort of awareness that you or any other para swimmer out there needs please just let us know and we will absolutely support your campaign um best of luck with the rest of the media interviews and documentaries yeah. over the next coming weeks and months i'm sure you're going to be a busy man and um yeah thank you for coming on Thank you so much for having me. And, you know, hi, everyone. Hi, Mark. <laughs> yeah, try and get some sleep over the next few days. The oh, interviews are quite, they're killers, actually. So, yeah. yes, good luck with that. And, of course, good luck with the, the swimming career as well. Fingers crossed for Paris. And, of course, this next coming year with her, what was it two, three majors you've got three. coming up? Yeah, Bro. it's a busy one. So, yes, good luck. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Great stuff. So that just about rounds up this week's episode of the Propulsion Swimming Podcast. If you haven't subscribed already on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, or Spotify, please do so. Um, Dan, until next week, I will see you in seven days. Yes, thank you very much for listening, everyone. We'll catch you on the next one. You've been listening to the Propulsion Swimming Podcast with Scott and Dan. We want to thank you for joining us and invite you to subscribe to the show as well as checking out the Propulsion Swimming YouTube channel for weekly tutorials and videos to get your swimming fix. We will be back next week. Until then, we'll catch you on the next one.